Hey everybody, this is Mike from Accounting for Cycling. Uh, today we're going to do some uh, open brain surgery, open heart surgery, um, on my primary desktop system. So, as you can see, I've already gotten the PCIe connectors off of the 3070 GPU. And so what we're going to be doing is going right into this little crevice here. Um, so to get out the primary drive. Um, actually, it might be right under here. Either way, we have to take the GPU out. Uh, it's just going to be easier to get at no matter where it might be. We're going to be putting in this Western Digital Black SN770 NVMe SSD. Uh, so it is Gen 4. It's decently specced. Uh, I mean, 55 or 5150 megabytes a second is still almost double of what the ADATA 8800 that I have in there right now is. So let's, uh, let's crack this open here quick. And I forgot to bring my knife up with me. So we'll just kind of <laughs> use the old screwdriver trick to cut through the tape. And so I've actually used these before. I have uh, one terabyte version in my um, Alienware X17 R1. Uh, same thing, Gen 4. Um, I actually use that primarily as a, a game and editing drive. And this one, I'm actually probably going to use it as a boot drive. Just why not? Um, so originally I was going to do this big uh, video update on the Acer Predator Orion 5000 desktop, um, which I took the i7 out, put it in here. Uh, the GPU is from there. Uh, I stupidly, while setting up this desktop, wiped the entire one terabyte Gen 4 drive uh, that I had moved all of my video files on. Uh, so the unboxing is gone, the deconstruction is gone, the rebuild is gone. Um, I've only got a couple of 14, 15 second clips. Um, so maybe I'll intermix those into here. Um, but this time I uh, don't plan on making that mistake. So dive into taking this out. And this is not a sponsored video. Uh, I just like to use iFixit. It's a nice handy toolkit. Uh, it gives you basically every driver you would need for electronics, including a couple of goofy ones for like old Nintendo cartridges. And but this kit actually gives you the big driver, the little driver, and then all sorts of different heads. This will be a little bit better. <laughs> a little less breathy. Now, if I wasn't working on this specific computer, um, I might actually use this uh, Elgato 4K60 Pro uh, capture card to actually record directly into the device, maybe even stream live. Uh, but obviously, we can't do that while we're also working on the computer. So, and I'm grounded down here uh, into an old power supply plugged in, turned off, but grounded. So we're, we're safe, even though I am working in socks. stressful part of this whole thing is so this card. It's just a little bit bigger than my old 2060 and my water cooler as seems to be the problem with a lot. <laughs> the, the tubing is like barely big enough to actually 
get up to where the CPU is. Uh, but I do like using full ATX boards, just they're, uh, they fill the space better, plus I actually use a lot of the expansions. Um, but you can see this is one of the salvaged pieces out of that Acer Predator Orion. Uh, GeForce RTX 3070. It's got the generic uh, do, don't touch for the fans. Uh, it seems to keep it pretty cool. And it's got a metal back plate. Decent amount of piping in there too to keep it cool. Nothing too flashy, uh, but also it's not one of those like gargantuan like three, four slot GPUs. Um, but yeah, you can see a little bit of the Predator logos there. Same here. Very subtle Acer branding. Uh, so if you didn't know, you'd never even guess it. But we'll set that off the side here. All right. Now. I think it's in here. So we're gonna pop this out uh, because this is a two slot, three slot portion. I don't know, I've got a lot of SSDs in here. They are all captive screws before. Yeah. <laughs> this, this is my first motherboard that has all these different like covers and heat sinks all over everything. Uh, my old one was a B450. Oh, that one was not captive. Oh, it makes you really thankful for the <laughs> magnetic tip. <laughs> It's just going to make sure. Okay, good. These two are captive. Uh, but so this has the thermal paste goop on it um, and three SSDs. So we'll be able to reuse those. So the one we're taking out here, yeah, the one we're taking out here is going to be this XPG. Uh, this Crucial P3, this is a Gen 3 2 terabyte. It actually says it right on there. Um, same with the SSD 980 from Samsung. And so first I'm going to take this out. And I don't know why there's like a third screw hole here. I'm, I'm sure that's for a, the longer SSDs. These are all the 2280s. I think there's also a 22110 is the next size up. And so it, it has support for all of those, which is really nice. Um, I, I'm sure if it's got support for this 2230 that eventually is going to go into my Surface Pro or it's going to keep sitting in that container and never go anywhere which is also quite possible um, I still have like a hundred gigabytes left on my 256 gig, gig drive on my Surface Pro 8 and it's not filling up anytime soon so we'll take this guy out so this is an ADATA XPG SX8800 PNP, one terabyte Gen 3 drive. And let's see if we can actually zoom in on here or focus in on here. So it, it was a pretty nice drive. I've used a couple of these before, primarily in laptops to expand storage. And this one seems to be the only one that's ever given me an issue and just random blue screen crashes um, kind of unsure of why I don't know it's all random uh, but it every time it blue screens it doesn't recognize this specific drive so if it's stable enough to just be used as an external drive cool um, otherwise it'll just kind of sit there 
maybe get put as my background for video calls along with all of my bike gears and disc brakes keeps it interesting while you're on interviews or middle of a team's call and see people like poking around clearly looking at your, your background you're like oh yeah feel free to stick around I'll tell you all about them Um, I even have a disc brake rotor on there, and that's just, I got sent the wrong one. Um, I was going to do a little bit of an upgrade on the disc brakes to my Specialized Turbo Vado, uh, but they sent a center lock, and it uses six bolt. So, so it's a nice decorative piece, and I'm not too worried about putting fingerprints on it. All right, so this is another uh, carryover from the Acer. It's a Samsung one terabyte Gen 4 drive. And presently it's on the direct to CPU lane. And I'm actually going to swap this to where the old boot drive was. Not a big uh-oh, though. Uh, but you can see that there's no support for the very short SSDs. So it wants to stick to the magnet, but not where I want it. Also, if you for the eagle-eyed viewers, you may have seen that I back the bit into the into the bolt and then go forward. Um, that's mostly to prevent any sort of cross threading. All right, here's the new one. And I may not use it as a boot drive. Um, I don't know, undecided. I might actually just use it as a super storage drive for things like this, where I'm recording in 4K. I think this camera only does 4K 30. Uh, but still, I mean, that's a lot of data. And then, of course, the 4K 60 capture card. Yeah. You bring in a lot of data when you're recording at that level. Bit came out. <laughs> it's a nice thing, it's just magnetic, but all right. So you can definitely see one of the big reasons why I picked up this board for the uh, 12th gen Intel i7 uh, 12700F that's in here. Um, obviously it's got four slots for RAM, so we've got 64 gigs of DDR5 RAM uh, running at 5600 megahertz. Four NVMe SSD drives, um, including obviously the one that goes up the processor directly, and then these three go through the chipset. Uh, and then also a good amount of expansion here. Uh, in my old one, I had you know, GPU like I have here, capture card, and then also my previous board did not have 
the USB-C Thunderbolt header. So I actually had one, of the, one as an expansion card down here. Um, also too, it's got the debug LED system on top, which is really nice if you're going through these things, and especially when you're having issues with a drive and you don't know what's happening. So we'll start putting these back on here. Um, I also thought it was a pretty good looking board, so yeah, aesthetics do make a difference. It's not the kind of slip you want to have. Didn't hit anything, but it still make, makes your heart rate shoot up a bit. It's like, I don't know, it's still only at like mid 70s, which is elevated for me. Mine's usually in the low 60s, kind of mid high 50s. Um, but yeah, when your screwdriver slides over onto your motherboard, it'll Nervous. Um, also, highly uh, would suggest not doing your morning coffee and then deciding, hey, I'm going to work on my computer. You'll, a little bit of jitters. And so going backwards and then forward just ensures that you have the threads hitting correctly. Um, you don't always get quite the pronounced snap that this seems to do. Um, usually it's a much more subtle, you just kind of feel the threads getting into the right spot. Uh, but it just ensures that you don't cross thread anything. Uh, it's very important when you're working with things like titanium bolts or anything carbon because you definitely don't want to strip out, you know, like something dumb like your bottle cages. Especially if you're doing like, just like you're cleaning and you want to take your bottle cages out just so you can get every little nook and cranny and um, that's what I was talking about before there we go so, there, even, even better Whew, we can put those back into place Trying to manage cables just a little bit. Um, not too particular, um, especially when it comes to getting these GPU cables in order. Uh, I mean, especially when you got the sixth pin, your eighth pin is just kind of hanging out there.
I'm just trying to be very certain that the GPU is seated correctly. All right, so that's everything back in there. Um, I'm not terribly worried about it not posting. Um, <laughs> I'm still gonna leave the side panel on just in case. So, there you have it. All right, I know the super fun part. Just plug this right in here. Don't mind the unkept hair. So this is the, you might be able to see this. I've got uh, the majority of my cables sleeved, so they just kind of sit in one big bunch. Um, it's more for aesthetics because I've got this open back on my desk. And flip power on be able to it's a little red light here and this board actually has a power button in it so probably should have plugged in some displays first but you know it's the little things And you can see the numbers running through all the debug codes that are RGB on our fans on, so USB is at least working. All right. Cool. I will spin the camera around just quickly here. You can see this is for my capture card attachment. Um, I usually flip it back and forth between uh, one of my HDMI's goes out to the projector that may or may not be in the background here. Uh, just making sure quick everything's hooked in. There we go. All right. Make my way around from the bike area. And this might be super close. So I've got the 30 mil lens on. Um, but we have booted into BIOS. So it's an excellent, excellent sign there. Um, you can see on the inside here, we've got all of our, the Corsair Dominator um, RAM sticks. That's, this is how it's set up for its actual hardware lighting. Uh, it's something you can choose when you're in Corsair's IQ software. Um, as where the Razer lighting, the fans and the water cooling block, they just kind of do that for you. Um, Anyways, thank you so much for viewing today. Um, this has just kind of been an impromptu computer surgery here. Um, thanks for sticking around, and uh, please like and subscribe. Uh, check out more of my content, and have a great day.